Hello friends, and welcome to the first of my animation challenges. I'm hosting these over on my OpenTunes Discord, so if you're not already a member, head on over there using the link in the description and join in the fun. And these challenges that I'm putting together have two purposes. They'll get you working with OpenTunes, and they're also a good excuse to practice your animation. And I'll purposely keep them as short and focused as I can, because I know we've all got other projects we want to work on. But I do suggest that you have a few attempts with each challenge to be able to learn and improve. And keep coming back to them from time to time, as you will improve each time you try them. And also, when you retry the animation afterwards, compare what you've just done with what you'd done previously. You'll likely be surprised at your progress. I know I always am. So, if you enter, and when I've seen each challenge uploaded to the Discord, and successfully completed, I'll award you a new role on the server, and you'll be able to see the next challenge. And there's not a time limit for each challenge, each one will be revealed in order once you've completed the previous, and I think you'll have a lot of fun with them. So there's full instructions on the Discord, there's not many of them, but to get the most out of the challenges, follow what they suggest. But in brief, I'd like you to create the animation in OpenTunes, to render it out as a GIF, and upload it on the Discord. So the first challenge is a simple one, and in this video I'll go through my approach so you guys new to OpenTunes can get started. But for those of you that know what you're doing with OpenTunes and are keen to get started, let me tell you what the challenge is. And here's my finished animation that I'm about to make, and it's just a simple ball drop, with the ball starting at the top of the screen, held there for a number of frames, and then it falls straight down, bounces a little and comes to rest, again holding for a number of frames at the end. And if you render this out as a GIF to share on the Discord, it'll play as a loop, which is another reason to hold the first and last drawing. And this challenge is just to get you started with OpenTunes and animation. For new users of the software and new animators out there, it'll get you started with the X sheet, with the onion skin, adding drawings, and rendering, as well as starting to consider your spacing and timing of drawings. And if you've not used OpenTunes much, I have a beginner's video linked in the card on screen and linked in the Discord. So do take a look at that first to pick up the basics. But let me take you through my process for this challenge. And firstly, I want to say that this challenge is more about the process. It's about newbies using OpenTunes for the first time and seeing how easy it can be to put an animation together and share it with the world. It's not about the final result looking perfect or how well you can draw. It's about getting an animation together and starting to get a feel for the process. So don't think you can't do this, because you can. And the first thing you might notice is that my layout might look different to yours. And you can change that, and it's something you should look at at some point, as it'll make your life animating easier. But that's not essential for now. You'll still have the same options. You'll just need the egg sheet that I've got on the right here, or the timeline, and the viewer, which is the drawing area here. And if you want to use a different pen as I do, you'll need the palette and the style editor. But we'll see that in a second. So the first thing to note is that I'm going to do just a sketch animation. So I won't care about neat lines or having the ball exactly the same shape. I want you to learn how to add the drawings and retime them to make your animation feel right. So once you've got the feel of the animation correct, you can then draw neatly in a separate level. But that isn't this challenge. So before I started recording this, I took just a minute or two for a warm up and I'd recommend that you do some kind of warm-up yourself before you start any drawing session, just to loosen up your wrist and get you ready for drawing. And there's plenty of warm-ups you can choose from, but I like drawing circles, and circles within circles. These are the animator's bread and butter, so the better you get with them, the easier it'll be to start off animating. From your first animations of balls moving, to the basis for most of your characters, so the practice for me is to draw these large circles first, through to the bottom of the page, and then to draw a centre circle through all of them, 
and then to fill up each of the spaces with a circle trying to get it to touch the outside line and touch the inside circle so there's as little gap between them as possible. So I've left the last one till now so we want a circle here with it trying to touch the outside line and the centre circle. Then the next circle also wants to touch the outside line and the centre circle but then also this previous circle I've just drawn. So again I'll do some circles to practice. There. And then we continue filling it up. So let's remove that warm up level and then I'll start a new raster level. And I like using the raster level for sketches because using the pencil just feels more natural with it. And I don't need to use smoothing or to change the colour after I've drawn. So as always give the level a new name and then we'll add a new palette entry and you can just draw with the colour you've got now using the brush tool. So I'll click this button to add a new style. I'll then choose the raster tab from the style editor and if you scroll down you can find the pencil. And this gives you a natural looking pencil line. So let's name the column. It's always best to name your columns before you start and draw the first ball. There we go. Perfectly not perfect. So again, don't worry too much about drawing perfect circles or having them exactly the same size. Just work on the movement for the animation and get used to using open tunes. So the first tip for you, I want this ball to fall straight down and to bounce in the same position. So I use the guides that's around the sides of the viewer. So that's the space at the top here and the gray space down the left. So if you click anywhere in here, you can add a guideline to the screen. We'll place that in the centre of the ball. And that'll help us keep the ball centred and falling in a straight line. And the next consideration is whether you're going to work straight ahead or pose to pose. And straight ahead simply means drawing one drawing after the other. So drawing the ball at the top here on frame one, and then drawing the ball further down on frame two, then further down on frame three, further on frame four, up to the end of the animation. Or pose to pose means you draw the first pose on frame one, then you draw the next pose at the bottom of the screen, and then start to draw the drawings in between. And I like to work in a combination of both of them. So I'll move to the next frame by clicking in the X sheet. We'll turn on the onion skin by hovering over the previous frame, and you can see there's two blobs above the frame marker. I want to click the one on the right, and that means that as I move, the onion skin will move with me. But now I can see drawing number one is I'm doing the next drawing. So I'll make the drawing at the bottom where I want the ball to land. And we're going to use squash and stretch, which means that as the ball falls, it'll stretch downwards, and when it lands on the floor, it'll squash on the floor a little bit. And this makes the animation look more interesting. So we want the ball to be wider than the ball at the top here, because it's going to be flattened a little bit on the bottom. We want to mark this around the centre line to keep the ball falling in that straight line. And then what I'll do is I'll click on drawing number one and we'll get this little handle at the bottom here. And this allows us to click and drag on that handle to make drawing number one last longer. And if you remember, I said we want to draw number one to stay still for a few frames before the ball falls. And now what I'll do is I'll turn on the onion skin for the following frame. So I'm on frame 13 and I want to see the onion skin for frame 14. So again, if you hover over the area below the marker, we'll choose the one on the right. And now I can see the following drawing in green and the previous drawing in red. So then I want to draw the ball in between those two positions. So because the ball is falling quite fast at this point, we want to stretch downwards. So now we've got three drawings with the ball at the top of the screen, with it starting to fall and squashed at the bottom. And now it's just a case of adding the in-betweens to have this ball accelerate from the first drawing through to the last. Now do this by extending a drawing and then on the new drawing in between I'll just start drawing that in between and it'll add the new drawing for me.
and then here on this extension for number one I can add the in-between drawing here and then every now and again run through your drawings to check that they seem to be moving okay now just add the other in-betweens now Okay, so that's the first few drawings added. So the ball slowly moves, accelerating out from the first position, and the drawings get further apart as it falls down to the ground. And I might want to include a few more drawings in this, but I'll take a look at that later once I've got the whole animation completed. So now the ball's fallen and squashed on the floor, it needs to bounce back up a little bit. Obviously it's lost some energy by falling, so it bounces not quite as high, and then comes down, bounces again, and these bounces get smaller and smaller until the ball stops. So we've already seen how to draw in between to make the ball fall, so all we need to do is to decide on the height of each bounce, and I'll draw the extremes first, and then we'll fill the in-betweens in. So to help keep the size of the ball, ideally we want to see the first sketch again. And if we hover over the onion skin, if you remember, there were two circles you could click on to turn on the onion skin, the left and right, and the right one is for a relative onion skin, so the onion skin moves with the current frame. And the left one is a fixed onion skin. And if I click that, that means that onion skin is fixed to always show, regardless of what frame I'm on. So this will help me keep the size of the ball the same, or as close to the same as I can through the whole animation. So now let's draw the top of the height of the first bounce. We'll have it just below the center here. And then I'll draw the next extreme after it's bounced up to come down. And again, to be able to see where the ball lands, I'll add a guide. So let's go up a couple of frames to frame 15 where the ball lands. And I'll click on the side here and move the guideline to be the bottom where the ball hits the ground. And that'll mean that when I draw the next ball where it lands, I can draw it landing in the same place. And the ball is squashed a little bit, but not as much as the first time, because it didn't fall from very high. And as you can see, I've gone over the line here. So even though I don't want neat lines, I'll use the eraser to take out this bottom line. Okay, so now I've got the ball falling, I don't need these guides anymore. So to remove them, I click and drag and push them off the screen. The top ones go to the top, and the left ones I push off to the left. So let's take a look. Okay, so one thing I'll do, I'll just extend the time of the first and last frames. And I'll just add another quarter second onto those. And then before we render out, we'll change the scene settings. And to include a background, we just need to increase the alpha on this background color option. And close that. And then we'll go to the render menu, output settings. We'll change it to be a GIF. And then I'll also shrink the animation because it doesn't need to be full size. And I'll shrink it down by half and that'll be fine to look at. We'll check the frame numbers. 1 to 69 is right, and then hit render. That shouldn't take too long to render out. And that goes into the default output folder of your project. And then if I look in my open stuff folder, inside projects, there's my project, and outputs, there's the GIF. Yeah, I think that's worked out okay. 
Let's see some changes in the size of the ball, and obviously the ball isn't super neat, but that's fine. This challenge is just about working out the timing. If I was to continue this animation, I'd then create another level and then trace over the top, making my lines much neater. Or I'd use a vector level and use the circle and ellipse tool to make them look neater. And then of course I'd add colour and any shadows and that kind of thing. But for now, the timing is all we're after. So that's the first in the level 1 animation challenges complete for me. And I'll leave a link in the description for you to download this project so you can take a look at the individual frames if that'll help. But I hope this showed how easy it was to work in OpenTunes and I really hope you can drop by and have a go at the challenges yourself. So get OpenTunes, get animating and get better. And that's a guarantee. Thank you.